morning. It is the 13th day of March. Can you imagine? March is halfway done. I, I'm not understanding why 23 is flying, but it, it's fine. <laughs> it is a beautiful time to be alive, to be six feet above the ground. And I myself am feeling quite fresh. Terrible. This is when morning you can interact with us at Wi-Fi on Facebook, Y254 channel on Twitter, Y254 underscore channel on the gap. We are now just sliding into the news and politics segment of the show. And we have a couple of things that we're going to touch on. But before we do that, I'll allow my guest to introduce himself. Hello. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. How are you? I'm great. I'm doing well. Uh -huh. Please introduce yourself to the people. Um, my name is uh, Simon Awene. Mm -hmm. Simon Awene is a, is a father mm -hmm. and the founder of uh, Slum Story Kenya. Mm -hmm. Slum Story Kenya is an organization, it's a CBO mm -hmm. that uh, deals with the uh, empowerment of youth through music and arts. Mm -hmm. So mostly we do sports to influence youth mm -hmm. in time. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Abu, is it a particular community where you, you're from or you chose Mostly somewhere? Mostly we work in Westlands constituency at the moment. Uh -huh. some county. Uh -huh. yeah. it, is it for ladies and gentlemen or you're starting with a boy child and spilling over? It's all over. Yeah? We do a lot of things. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, when, when you hear about sports, we yeah. don't really focus on the girl child a lot with, with sports. Although I, I, I'm quite of the belief that we're very good at it. Yeah, but uh, mostly about sports, we, uh, we support the sports, that, that, uh, the existing sports. Mm -hmm. So we have the, the volleyball for the ladies. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we have some basketball for ladies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When a woman has a volleyball? Yeah, when a woman has a volleyball, Sana. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit of an invite. <laughs> some things I don't think I have need to join us. in my life. True. All right, Karibu Sana. Asante. So in our conversations today, we are going to touch on a couple of things, but not too many. To pair, we can sit and talk and talk and talk and talk mm. until the time ends. Mm. <laughs> but I do want us to touch on, I'll start with the Azimio, <laughs> yeah. because they've, they've been hi making highlights. They had previously given, I want to say us, or the government, they, they, they stated they gave us an ultimatum, 14 days, mm -hmm. before they begin uh, mass action, or so they put it. Mm -hmm. What What are your thoughts? Is it just ni ni story na IBC? Because yes, they're trying to balance with, with the cost of living, it's too high, and there are funds here and there that have been missing, that they want, or they demand are accountable for, mm -hmm. but what's happening here? What 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 kwa ground watu nasa Um, My thoughts? Mostly, yes. let me say, like, uh, the ultimatums, to me, mm -hmm. they are based on maybe 2027 election. Mm -hmm. You see, now we are having an IBC that is, that is going out. And there is no mm -hmm. any other IBC in place. Mm -hmm. So, for me, I think Azimio is using all the methods mm -hmm. to at least uh, have their formula of uh, choosing the next IBC commissioners mm -hmm. in place. So, they are using any other formula. Mm -hmm. in, uh, to whip or to, to mobilize the, the ground towards the pushing for the agenda. Mm -hmm. If you check the cost of living, every talk, but at the end of the day, there is always a hidden agenda. Mm -hmm. And to me, if I look at it, Chebukati have just left, mm -hmm. and there is, there is a space there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're trying to fill in a vacuum. Yeah. It's, it's not really about servers being opened now. We're just even if the we position. open them now. Uh -huh. What changes? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. That's a very now good question. Now they are open. Uh -huh. Today, we, yeah, they have the meal march to, to State House. Mm -hmm. They reach at the entrance, uh, the gate point, and then they ask now, these are the servers. Mm -hmm. What will they do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, these are very hard hitting questions. Now, I yeah. like to be balanced. Yeah. So, we had our president speaking yesterday. Yeah. He was at, at, at a Thanksgiving event in Chuka, and he categorically said that even though the demonstrations, peaceful as they may be, they will not hinder the development plan of his particular government. Yeah. How are you feeling about this? Was it a must that the president comes out and, and addresses the situation? Um, I've been asking myself what, it, what will it cause the government mm -hmm. or the president if he, sit, if he just maybe copies some of the leadership strategies of a uh, the former, the late uh, President Kibaki, mm -hmm. just to ignore the opposition, mm -hmm. settle in the office mm -hmm. and work for Kenyans instead mm -hmm. of roaming Thanksgiving churches every day and then mm -hmm. with a lot of politics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't you think that uh, he has been well uh, invited into March 
-hmm. with Azimio and he has just uh, decided to play on with them. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, Kenyans are losing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this back and forth is, is unnecessary? Or? To me it is unnecessary mm -hmm. because you've been elected six months mm -hmm. into the office and he has not settled. Mm -hmm. The guy has been moving around, the president is really moving. Mm -hmm. The thanksgiving, what are we thanking the Lord for? Mm -hmm. We won, he won the election, mm -hmm. we, uh, he celebrated in Akuru hugely, it was a very big crowd. Mm -hmm. What are we still going to church to do? Mm -hmm. Can we just go to church silently, mm -hmm. pray, like there is so many churches around town, around State House area here, come back, work for Kenyans. Hey, you're very, <laughs> your words are very, eh. but speaking of the church, yeah. I, I really do get a bit, yeah. I want to say befuddled when I see church services one minute we are, we are doing what's needing to be done what has the business that church you know mm. tends to take on mm. why i've gone to church on a sunday and then suddenly from nowhere there, there's like 10 15 minutes of, of political speak do you think the church should be involved actually church church is even scaring people away because uh, you are going to church to seek the presence of the lord and talk to the lord maybe about your issues mm -hmm. and people are really going through a lot of issues mm -hmm. Some are, people are f fighting depression, mm -hmm. people are fighting hunger, mm -hmm. and a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And then you go to church, and your pastor walk from uh, the, back, uh, the back of the church, mm -hmm. and we celebrate Jesus. Mm -hmm. They praise and worship for five minutes, then you are invited, you feel like the Lord is here. Mm -hmm. Then ten minutes later, for example, let me say, I'm an mm -hmm. I'm in a church that now the, the government, the president, is attending. Look mm -hmm. at the speeches they are making. Mm -hmm. Are they uniting people? Mm -hmm. Or they are even, <laughs> they are even making the situation worse. Mm -hmm. You go hungry, you come back even more, more hunger, <laughs> with, more, with a lot of hunger. Mm -hmm. Because uh, is here you are having a president saying, <coughs> we are not going for the handshake. Mm -hmm. but and we he's pray, very adamant. And we are praying for unity in church. Mm -hmm. uh, how are we going to sit down with the Lord and ask him to answer our prayer of unity? Mm -hmm. In that, in such a, in that, in such a situation, mm -hmm. you see, it's really different. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if the president is ready, uh, is a is a true Christian, mm -hmm. and we say we need to serve the Lord in spirit and in sincerity, mm -hmm. there is no lot of division. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I want to touch on that, but let me just move on swiftly because apa apo 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 kidogo. So also over. Uh, the last week or the weekend, we had the Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa <laughs> coming out to speak. And the points I will speak on are concerning the media. Yeah. All right. So yeah. he, he stated <laughs> that the media needs to be fair, even when covering the specifically the President and uh, the c current government, the Kenya Kwanzaa government. Yeah. And he uh, says the media has not been fair or has it's not been balanced also. I can now, no, 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 Asha, uh, talk to me. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> You know, Rigiji, ni mtuwa kuongea ukweli. There is a lot of things that Rigiji says that if you've ever worked for government, um, uh, any, any other regime, you'll see it is true. Mm -hmm. Like when you say the government is a, is, a, is a company where you are judged with what you've brought in the table, mm. it is true, somehow. Because you see, during the formation of coalition, they're bringing tribal king, kingsmen you bring Mudavadi so that you can get lawyers. So you, you will be given at least a portion depending on how you brought. Mm -hmm. But now, with the media, it is also true. Mm -hmm. But I also want to ask him a question. Mm -hmm. They are appointing media men mm -hmm. into government. Mm -hmm. And they want the same media company to be free. To be free. And fair. Gashuri now had friends uh -huh. who will be visiting him in the government office. Mm -hmm. Do you still expect those friends of Gashuri to report the exact thing? And not or something biased. that is going to hinder? the office where the shoot is serving. Mm -hmm. So how free do you want media to be? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's just true. Media have never, uh, is, not f is not free mm -hmm. somehow, mm -hmm. but they are also causing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one hand, they, they are saying that they are suffering for whatever reason, that, that they're being painted <coughs> in a bad light. Yeah. And he even called on sp a specific <laughs> What's an is that idea? But he called on a specific newspaper, yeah, yeah. and and he said ah, these people have not been doing us correct. But on the other hand, mm. he is now also appointing, or the the current government is also appointing. So there's 
Miscommunication, what's happening? There's a bit of imbalance there. But for me, the media that they are, that is complaining about, we had, uh, let's say, Kanzedena, mm -hmm. her appointment to states, uh, into, into state job. Mm -hmm. What followed, you see, you saw how that pre, uh, the media company that employed Kanzedena mm -hmm. behaved. And I'm sure Rigiji is not happy about that, the same media company. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of things. Now they have, a, they have a, uh, again moved to a point, maybe, let's say, Gashuri. Mm -hmm and other people and other media personnel. Mm -hmm. Why? It means even the same government have had some media personnel that are working into, into various media companies mm -hmm. for them mm -hmm. specifically. Mm -hmm. How did you land a job? Into, into a, how did you get your a state, a state job mm -hmm. from a media company who connected you? And we are living in a Kenya of connection. Mm -hmm. It means you've been working for them to shape the opinion of the people secretly. On the other hand, Azimio is also planning, like, we are going to tell you which media station you are not going to, you are going to, to boycott, which newspaper you are, going, you are not going to read. Mm -hmm. You see, it is all over. Mm -hmm. So this one is not comfortable with this one, with the other media station. Mm -hmm. This one it is all over. It's just a game. Wow. Yeah. Is it almost like favoritism? This, this, this is the child I like. Yeah. This other child. I like. yeah. But I'd like to think so, that so there are at that point, uh -huh. the media themselves need to decide whether they want to be independent or to continue so you're saying they have one foot in, one foot out. Yes. They're not quite sure. Both sides of the political divides. I'd like to believe that maybe Semem Tukamagashuri, yeah. his appointment was because of his rigorous reporting. Like he's very knowledgeable about certain things and he would become a, a very big asset. Yeah. I, I, I would not like to imagine that there's something happening in secrecy. It's just that he's adept and he's knowledgeable mm. and why not? Uh, <laughs> can see he wants to add the boy. No. <coughs> All right. So something else, uh, Rigiji, our deputy president, uh, said is um, he touched on the uh, former president, Huru yeah. Kenyatta, yeah. and his relation with the leader of the Azmio camp, that is Raila Odinga. Mm. And he is very concerned because he also addressed the coming protest or mass action or the march to State House, as it has been dubbed. So he asked why was when the price of Unga was at a lower price, uh, or, or right now it's at a lower price, but when they were, when the handshake situation mm. was reigning mm. during the former regime, mm. why was there no pandemonium? Or the cost of living. I want to say, we're saying unga, mm. but we're connecting it to the cost of living. Yeah. But I, how do you feel about his also, I want to say reaction to the Azimio camp's desires? Um, see, Rigiti to Nimpo Kweli to still, like, like uh -huh. it is true. It's something, he's saying things that you can relate to. Mm -hmm. They are very, to me, the question is, they said we give them one, one year so that they work on a, on a long-term uh, uh, food uh, sustainable programs when it's come to the cost of living, for mm -hmm. example. Currently, the government have registered the uh, farmers. Now let me ask them mm -hmm. a question. Mm -hmm. I just talked to my mom home mm -hmm. and my shoes. Mm -hmm. Now it is raining. Hey, we thank God. Uh, Back home there. Mm -hmm. But the, the assistant chiefs that registered them still have not communicated when they are receiving their fertilizers. Wow. Up to now, mm -hmm. the people are still lining up to buy fertilizers at a very high cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Now, if Rigiji, it is true now, the cost of Wunga have reduced a little bit. But now, what will happen if you fail to provide a... a to supply farmers with the, provide farmers with the, with the, with the subsidized fertilizer, mm -hmm. having registered them. Mm -hmm. So you see, we are still heading to another, another situation whereby Beyaunga, Ju, Keshochini, like it has been, it is not a constant price. Mm -hmm. Even if today, maybe Rigiji said, Jana, it is 170 something, mm -hmm. 180 something, it is true. But you go to supermarket today, you'll mm -hmm. get maybe it is 190 something to something. Mm -hmm. It is not constant price. It's fluctuating. Yeah, it is okay. fluctuating. Okay, yeah. all right. Oh, okay. There we go. And I want us to finish with the highlight of today's conversation. So, there was a particular feature on one of the media houses and they were focusing on Uwasengishu as a county and there is apparently a job fiasco. So, there is 
I don't know if I, let me just mention it in passing. So there's an agency called First Choice. And apparently this particular agency has been duping job seekers. Mm. So I imagine it is taking money from you or uh, trying to organize how or facilitate how you can go abroad mm. to you know, search for greener pastures and all these things. But it's not really working out. The, the system is breaking down somewhere in between. But it went ahead and flat out denied that uh, they're not duping any job seekers. So now what caught my eye is the numbers. The numbers are terrible. There's about 10.1 million people in Kenya who are not employed. 2.5 million actively hunting for jobs. Mm -hmm. So w where are we going as a nation in relation to the youth? How we're going to school, first of all, the, the amount of fees is, has greatly increased since, since, I don't want to point the fingers and name names during the gyms, but now things are, are really expensive and we're doing our very best to graduate. Mm -hmm. Now, after we graduate, then what? But see, like, like my organization works in the slums. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure the reason why Kenyans uh, maybe elected this regime is because they were speaking the real issues that were affecting the local monarchy mm -hmm. at that point. Mm -hmm. Even up to now, mm -hmm. the hustlers, that has been the word of the the day mm -hmm. in the slum area. I'm hustling here, doing this. Meaning there is no specific job one person is, a, a person, a, a, somebody is doing in the, in the area. Ni hapa kule, hapa kule, hapa kule. And uh, it is true, hali ni ngumu kabisa. Leave alone how the government is providing the subsidy, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the relief food in other, in maybe semi-arid areas. The, the slums of Nairobi is real semi-arid areas within, within the city. Mm. You go to Madare, you go to, not really, I don't want to talk much about Kibera, mm -hmm. but there are some slums that are hidden, like Mukuru Kwa Jenga, mm. you get Gidogoro here, you get somewhere around Kangemi. Mm -hmm. There are some slums that have been focused a lot uh, by media. So you see everybody, maybe, maybe those, uh, the well-wishers that are coming into the country, mm -hmm. focus in that slums, like Kibera and other, and other big slums. Mm -hmm. But there are these ones, it's in Dogondogo, here and there, that people are really struggling. The situation is really enormous. Uh, but now, the problem is, we are having again agencies. Mm -hmm. People who have gone to work maybe in Qatar and other Middle East countries. Mm -hmm. Now, but a knowledge and small connection of how they can work for a certain company there. So they are coming back here to, uh, to start uh, an agency that recruits people here, uh, labor, laborers here, I'm a, I'm a workers here, mm -hmm. for another company. But they don't have a real good working relationship and uh, where we cut that and i know of maybe let's, let me talk of four people i know in person mm -hmm. that i talk to i can i can even get my phone and they always cry like simon uh can you connect me how i can come back to the country wow i know so many so this these companies these agencies are well connected uh, with the um, various government departments so you find the agency uh, owner maybe knows a certain a certain big fish somewhere in a in a government office. Even if you do what, he'll tell you, Simon, see what you've called about. Like there is a, this lady I called. I will not mention her name. I called the agency mm -hmm. that took her to Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. While they were working here, they were trained first on how they are going to work. Mm -hmm. After training. Uh, Wakambiwa, you will have to ufike, ufike two weeks. You are only told how to greet a uh, Mwarabu, the small, small things. Mm -hmm. How you can maybe Maji, the small names, mm -hmm. Maji in Aituaji in Arab, uh, and other names. And then Unaperek mm -hmm. Some of these ladies are always uh, ferried from as far as down in rural areas because the ladies in urban areas are in these Kazi sizing. Mm -hmm. So they move as far as maybe somewhere in, uh, in Kuala, mm -hmm. where maybe a hunger have hit people there, down somewhere in Garissa, and then they bring these ladies. Mm -hmm. So you are taken to manage maybe a certain big house, mm -hmm. Zile's mansion, mm -hmm. and other things. She's not even a, a, a Jew anything. Mm -hmm. So what happens again, the contract that they are signing with this agency here, mm -hmm is different from the contract they are going they are required to, uh, to sign with the company that is recruiting them there so like this lady i'm talking about signed a contract here that she's going to work as a house help for two years 
but on reaching there make one contract that utakuwa unaenda kibarua kidogo one day unarudishwa kwa camp so the, you live as if you are in a in a in a in a day school so you are put in a dormitory somewhere okay and you are going to do a, a small job so it's more of like why de mbona ni have ko kuja hapa because in kenya i used to get let me say kata kwenda mjengo you mm. get 500 and it is consistent per week you are sure to work for six days mm -hmm. but huko you work at least twice a week twice a day, uh, twice a week mm -hmm. so the situation will become hard some of those agencies they they wanna could drop they have hold everything that you having no passport no everything so you are just you are a slave mm -hmm. and the government is doing nothing about it mm -hmm. i was really hopeful that uh, because i've always loved chap chap the chap chap guy the foreign affairs uh, uh, waziri mm -hmm. waziri mutua mm -hmm. But see the report they are giving back is like there are some a number of Kenyans that want to stay vizuri huko that is the good story about it but Those now the flip side yeah right? but now we want to know what is the government doing about a number of Kenyans also when you are stay vizuri huko mm -hmm. that is not what they are not telling us na the hali hali ni really ni hard ni mm -hmm. and i think uh, i i saw also the interview of a uh, of a waziri wa trade mm -hmm. um Waziri wa trade this is a uh, MK Moses Kuria <laughs> how he was really answering the question and he was even at point attack that he was is an in, interested party in the job I'm still waiting for the answer he's going to give mm -hmm. yeah thank you for bringing that up actually there was there was a time around last year there was a very big uproar it wasn't the first time yeah. how in specific the the ladies our ladies our kenyan ladies are going to the middle east and they're sustaining injuries out of just being you know harassed out there mm. again the documentations held so they can't really they can't escape they can't leave mm. and for hey, if you know something you cannot just walk around in in another man's country without identification you yeah. have to have your passport on you at all times so they've limited my movement you are harassing me now i cannot come back to the point of even passing away so someone who left very happy healthy and and you know hopeful now i'm an adikama mwili so is this madness i was asking my co-host just a few minutes ago is this madness because because madness the definition is doing the same thing <laughs> over and over and expecting mm. different results mm. what are we doing as a country and, and how is the government coming in at this point uh i know there are also some of the companies that are, that are recruiting uh, what when you want a good uh uh character of the kidogo is questionable mm -hmm. We are, you, you cannot recruit ladies who are who have uh, done a lot of nasty jobs in the street and you expect them to well behave in the foreign countries really for yeah true i've also seen you know i've been there is a company i've been working with and i've been moving uh, on and off to some nimekuwa a lot of interest in the middle east country mm -hmm. and i also know a friend of mine that is an uh, is having an agency mm -hmm. and some of the issues are mekuwa na wasichana These ladies they will do anything just to land in that middle, middle east country mm -hmm. but once I'm a land mm -hmm. she doesn't care she just want to go and terrorize that street kwa njia zake tu kwa biashara zingine yenyewezi taja on national tv mm -hmm. yeah so it's it's that and you in a little shit between the, some of those ladies with that character and the arab's wife aha uh -huh. uh -huh. okay so, so i think it is kwangu if the government really want to do something Then we need to start from square one revoke all the registration of all, uh, of all the agencies that are recruiting people mm -hmm. and then start now uh, at least to as a cuz scrutinize one by one for us to give you these lenses to operate what are the, some of the conditions you are going to work mm -hmm. yeah we revoke all of them you're, you're painting quite a, a vivid picture because now we're questioning the character of the people who are going abroad we are now taking blame from let's say these agencies or the actual government mm. to now the people because they have questionable morals or mm. but i i have in fact lived in riyadh for some time in my life and i know it's a very strict muslim country like you don't, don't really mind what walk of life you come from what color you are but if you're a lady you must cover yourself up i remember being of an age mm. even me I had to start wearing they don't play uh, with, uh, with yeah. such things yeah, yeah. so how again can someone how can we point a finger at, at our ladies that now the women are because basically that's what we're saying 
but I've also have had issues with that. We have allowed uh, those Arab nations, when they're in Kenya here, they just walk with hijab. Mm -hmm. We don't question them why they face their, their, food, their, their covering their faces while in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, the government also needs to fight for the freedom of the imported workers when you're not Kenya or Kenya. But the, mostly, mostly, the agencies don't, doesn't, or they don't need to mix the character of the ladies they're taking to them. Because Leon Mekuletia Mfanyi Kazi Mzuri, tomorrow I'm bringing you, <laughs> let me say, a gangster, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. Because we mtu wamefanya biashara, you know the business they have run. How many was chana wamekua, maybe wamekua kipiwa eka mwatu mchele. Na sasa story yake mekua too much in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Now they are, they are looking for a country where they can run into. Mm -hmm. And then they come into your agency. You don't even do thorough checkup, ile background uh, information, kidogo, the due diligence. Mm -hmm. Unafikia tu kuna nafasi ya kazi, ya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You hurriedly move that girl to that Middle East. Mm -hmm. Only to realize that few down later, uh, year, uh, months later, unasikia, we msichana, wamepigana na bibi ya muarabu. Mm -hmm. The issue, the same issue that elikuwa metoroki ya Kenya. So, if we revoke, and then, the, if the government revokes the the, li the operating li operation lenses the easy, easy agencies. Mm -hmm. It will give these agencies, at least while they could feel, they are not above the law. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you are operating, we give them, the parliament can also do something about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, the committee on trade. Mm -hmm. Because now why do we have these committees in the sitting in the assemblies? Mm -hmm. The committee on trade have never done any proposal, uh, they have never brought any bill concerning uh, and Kenya is a really ha in, Kenya is rich in terms of uh, in terms of uh, mm -hmm. it is one thing that we are known we are known for uh, mm -hmm. we are known for okay. globally mm -hmm. so they need to move on at least while they kufanya something they table a bill first they revoke mm -hmm. bring a bill so that we could take as a policies for these agencies that are going to operate you, you're speaking as 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 family as Kindiki, who is uh, about to remove 27 families from 27 areas very yeah. fast so that it can start. But you're, that I, I want, can you come back next week? <laughs> have follow up questions. But in the interest of time, yeah. I will ask you what do you think can be done about this unemployment rate? I do understand that the government has tried their best to advocate for the youth to not only go to or try and take on white collar jobs mm. but also to take on sana sana tv it is not these technical and vocational courses mm. things that you can do with your hands because at the end of the day kazi ni kazi you know, as mm. long as you can put something on the table as long as you can sustain if you have a family or not what do you think we should be doing step one to get i don't want to say get rid of mm. but to lessen the blow of unemployment as youth uh empowerment mm -hmm. for me when uh, president Ruto was coming to power i had really high hopes about the hustlers fund because i thought hustlers fund is going to work different from the ways of fund mm -hmm. you know we've had ways of fund and we are having the youth enterprise fund and there is there is another fund in uh, the the women reps office mm -hmm. then gaf mm -hmm. is a grant is a grant that uh, if you go to in every slum area, for example, or Kilamta, mm -hmm. there is always that small organization that is struggling to empower people. But now, like for example, I, I'm running a CBO. Mm -hmm. You're also required to apply 700 shillings, mm -hmm. just like any other youth there. Now these youths are looking up to you. Mm -hmm. To me, I, I feel the government betrayed as youths, having campaigned vigorously on a... On a the platform of youth empowerment. Mm. Because when you're saying tunaenda kuweka 50 billion ya kujenga huyu mama mboga na huyu boda boda huyu. Mm. To me, I thought that uh, it's going to have an office the same way that we are having a ways of fund. Mm -hmm. So that they, they are, we are having an appointee of the government into the hustlers funds office. Lakini, hakuna vinye tuneza kuwasimu vijana tumepewa, we don't have an, any office that we can run into for empowerment. Mm -hmm. E hustler fund in getting a committee na yake, so that you can move, they can come and vet you. Mm -hmm. You need 500,000. If you get 500,000, what can you do with it within the slum area? 500,000 in pesa mingi sana. Mm -hmm. 
pesa mingi sana and somebody can do a lot of things people have changed their life from a mere 10000 shillings mm -hmm. 5000 shillings but now look at this if you go with 1000 shillings kwa duka sahi kununua anything you will come back with three items it's not even heavy you don't even have to buy a bag now to carry this una beba tu unga na kitu kingine ngo so you see I feel government betrayed us as youth. Mm -hmm. Instead, ya kufungua easy ma office ya the the wife of the first chief for cabinet <laughs> prime minister. <laughs> funny office thing, funny thing. When you said office, the first thing I thought was <laughs> the, the, the the office of the spouse of the prime cabinet secretary. Yes. <laughs> what is the troll? <laughs> See, tunge fungole office ya hustlers fund uh -huh. so that we can line there with our proposals and everything mm -hmm. so that the government can now find ways of empowering us down there. But at the end of the day, also look at this. In terms of government appointees, sazile wanachagua watu kazi hapa kule. The youths that have been in front line ya kukampeni ya that regime are always left behind. And in every government office, their brokers, their, their youths wale wenye alifanya campaign, now wanatembia na suti. The government did not provide them with any, anything to do. Mm -hmm. So wana provide masuti and they are working for people maybe who bought those jobs kukua kwa hizo mofi. You know, it's, it's a really different situation. The mm. people who are supposed to occupy the office are now outside. Mm. Now ndi watu walikuwa na zunguka mtani with this government mm -hmm. to promise youths, you see, went to kingi hapa, mimi ni mtu wenu, I'm just close with the president. The president will give me a small docket. Tunaiza saidiana tukiwa hivi. So you start making your proposals only to end up that now the guy that you are looking up to <laughs> is also roaming around a certain <laughs> government office in a suit <laughs> and, <laughs> and say that tuko kwa zerekali and mm. they have nothing to provide for the youth. Mm. So for me, uh, youth need to be taken a little bit serious. Mm -hmm. Tumepewa raw deal for so long. Mm. So long. Raw deals. In terms of nomination, we do a lot of campaigns. And then at the end of the day, the political leaders, they come up with a proposal of their, na their own names. Mm -hmm. their niece. Mm -hmm. Some bring girlfriends. Mm -hmm. Some brings different people. I'm going to scare the highest bidder took the nomination slot. Mm -hmm. And you campaigned, you do a lot of things there so that, and you are doing this genuinely to convince your people to follow this route so that from that route, mm -hmm. you can come back and empower your people, people. Your people in a certain way. In a kwangumu. In a kwangumu sana. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think, Government just need to take, not even government, even those in opposition. Mm -hmm. Because there is business everywhere. There is business in opposition, there is business in government. Mm -hmm. Easy connection, dogo ndogo easy. Niza mana sana kwa vijana. But look at the face of those people. Mm -hmm. Even when they come for, the president come for the Thanksgiving, who speak? Have you ever seen a young man speaking? Mm -hmm. How did they know? The young, the young men are always called in a small boardroom somewhere. Give your opinion very fast. Those opinions are taken seriously. They take pictures. They say, today we were in state house. <laughs> we need also to be heard, mm -hmm. not just to be seen. Yeah. <laughs> I can see you are very passionate about this. Ah, that's in Aumiza, like, mm -hmm. go to those some areas. And by the way, talking about unemployment rate, do you know what these unemployed, unemployment, uh, unemployed youths that are doing in the slum areas? Mm -hmm. Where did Nakada go? the mm -hmm. drugs issue mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i'm really happy that uh, the deputy president came to ruaka mm -hmm. and he saw by his own eyes mm -hmm. do something mr rigiji mm -hmm. is that bad mm -hmm. the foreigners are now killing out the next generation and the government is doing nothing in fact the people that they have given job are now cooperating we are tunaishi inchi ya kibipindi i don't know if you are aware of that mm -hmm. if you say kipindi yangu imeingiana so maybe like you are a drug dealer, mm -hmm. I can help you see so and so so that you're not arrested. And the end of, at the end of the day, they make huge ma a lot of, uh, huge amount of money. Kesho mm -hmm. mtu zunguka tu, is driving a big car. And now the pressure on social media, hey, it's flying a minunuwa gari, it's really tough. Mm. Yeah. So what I hear is also a lot of corruption uh, even on the ground. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And it is really affecting the local money. Yule mtu wa boda boda yule. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, thank mm. you so very much, Simon, for coming. I think, uh, again, just because we're pressed for time, not because we're not having a very good conversation and riveting one at that. Mm. You, if you would just please, again, tell them who you are and what you do, then we can wrap it up. Uh, what I do passionately mostly is, uh, uh, is youth empowerment. Mm -hmm. I run a slum story. Uh, slum story Kenya, as I said it. You can check us on Facebook, by the way. We are everywhere, mm -hmm. on Twitter, on Facebook. On TikTok, check the Slum Story Kenya. Uh, we deal with youth empowerment through music and arts. And personally, I work for Greenfield. 
as a media and communication guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you very much. You like to smile, I can yeah. see. <laughs> yeah. It is never that hard. Ah, I like that. It's never that serious. I yeah. Know. All right. At Y5 on Facebook, Y254 channel on Twitter. We are just concluding the youth and politics segment of the show today on a very much, very wonderful Monday. I will now allow us to take a short break and then we'll come back with Stephanie Eta and Brian Asakwa 101 with so much more. Please keep it Y254. Thank you.